find the least common multiple for the numbers 8 and 12. Once again, find the least common multiple for the numbers 8 and 12. All right, let's take a look at this thing. Let's take a look at this thing. One thing that gives students problems, and probably some of our adults too, when they hear this least common multiple, what's the difference between that and the greatest common factor? We get those two interchanged quite a bit mixed up. I like to look at the fact that if it's a least common multiple, our numbers are going to be greater than the 8 and the 12, all right, in this case, because 12, uh, 8's not going to divide into 12 evenly, but it's going to be toward the upper end. Now, if that had been 8 and 16, we would have had 16 for a least common multiple, but these do, are not exact perfect multiples of each other, because as I said, 8 times 2 gets us to 16, we would need a 12 there. So we know 12 is not where we're going, but we're going to work to get to a higher number that both of these will divide in evenly. That's not a very difficult one. It's not a very difficult one, all right? And let's take a look at it. Let's look at the multiples. First of all, the multiples of 8. If we start out with 8, that would be 8 times 1. We took 8 times 2. That, we just mentioned, would be 16. Bring on um, 8 times 3. We'd be at 24. Let's do another one for good measure, just show I know my 8s, all right? And, oh, even up to 40, how about it? But you know it keeps going on and on. I'm going to leave it right there. We'll not close the brackets out there unless we need to. But the three dots tell us we will go on and on. I think we're going to cross it way before that time. Let's take a look at 12. We can look at 12, and 12 is going to start us at 12. And then 12 times 2 would give us 24. These are multiples, by the way. When we multiply by 1, by 2... Next one we buy three, and I know what some of you just said. Ernie, you've already got it. We do, don't we? All right. And just for good measure, back up here, we would have, if we'd gone on more, we would have had 48, and you know what? There would be another common multiple. But what are we looking for? Folks, we're looking for the least. So we've got a 48 and 48 there, but our cross happens way back here. Go with the 24 and 24. That is your smallest situation. You say, Ernie, when do we use those kind of things? If you were to say 1 eighth plus 1 twelfth, that least common denominator is a least common multiple, those two numbers from those two denominators. So that's where we use this. That's where we use this. And so again, if we were to go on, we'll go one more step with it. We put a 24 here and a 24 here. Look at it and you see what happens. How about it? 8 goes into 24 three times. 3 times 1 will give us that 3. And over here, we're going to look at 2. And 2 times 12 gives us 24. We've got to multiply the numerator by 2. We will have 2. It says plus, so we will add. And that, my friends, would give us 5 24ths. What's the answer to the question? It's 24. But I want, again, wants to give you a little example of where is this concept used when we add fractions. It's what we do every time or subtract fractions. Least common multiples are the same thing as a least common denominator. All right. For more math help, visit tnlearn.org.